Good day. Welcome and welcome back to another science learning episode with yours truly, Teacher Mavel. For this lesson, we are going to learn about the interactions among living things in the environment. Some of these interactions are beneficial and some are harmful. Before heading to our today's topic, let us first define some terminologies that you will be needing for you to understand the lesson. Are you ready, kids? Very good! The first word is symbiosis. Symbiosis is a term used to describe any relationship or interaction between two dissimilar organisms. It is a close relationship between two species in which at least one species benefits. Sa mga bata, when we say symbiosis, it means ugnayan o pagkakaugnay ng dalawang organisms. Sa nasabing ugnayan, maaaring ang isang organismo ay nakikinabang, samantalang ang isa naman ay lubusan o lubhang naapektuhan. Alright, let's continue. In our environment, we have four different symbiotic relationship which includes mutualism, commensalism, predation, and parasitism. Now let us have the first symbiotic relationship, mutualism. So mutualism is an interaction wherein both the species benefit from each other. Now it's your turn. Please read it aloud. That was great. So, how did you understand the first concept? Anybody? Exactly! Mutualism, mga bata, ay isang uri ng interaksyon na kung saan ang dalawang organismo ay parehas o kapwa nakikinabang sa isa't isa. The best example would be the interaction between the plants and animals. The plants and animals are part of what we call oxygen-carbon dioxide cycle. In this cycle, the animals gives off or release carbon dioxide during respiration. So, ibig sabihin, kapag nagbe-breath out ang mga animals, naglalabas ito ng waste product na ang tawag natin ay carbon dioxide. Ang nasabing gas ay hindi kinakailangan ng mga hayop but very beneficial and useful for plants during photosynthesis. The plants on the other side releases oxygen during the process of photosynthesis. Oxygen is needed by the animals to survive in the environment. Therefore, it is a good example of mutualism because both of the organisms benefits from their relationship or interaction. So, to better understand the concept, I have here some more examples of mutualism interaction. Number one, we have sea anemone and clownfish. Are you familiar with them? May nakakita na ba sa inyo nitong mga larawan na ito? Alright, very good. So, karamihan sa atin ay nakita or napanood na ito sa movie na Finding Nemo. Okay, dito muna tayo mga bata sa sea anemone. Ang sea anemone ay kabilang sa family ng coral reefs kung saan matatagpuan ito sa malalim na bahagi ng karagatan. Sea anemone serves as the shelter of clownfish basically for protection. Ang mga sea anemone kasi ay mayroong toxic substance na inilalabas sa mga tentacles nito na nagiging dahilan upang hindi ito lapitan ng ibang sea creatures at nagiging safe ang lugar na ito para pamahayan ng isang maliit at makulay na isda katulad ng clownfish. But what about the clownfish? Hindi ba ito malalason sa mga sea anemones? Any guess from you kids? Alright, so the answer is no because the clownfish secretes a mucus-type substance covering their bodies which suppress the effect of the toxins released by sea anemone. 
Yun pala mga bata, hindi na mamatay o nalalason ang clownfish because of the protective substance on its skin. So paano naman ang sea anemone? Paano naman siya nagbe-benefit or nakikinabang sa clownfish na kumukuha ng proteksyon at tirahan sa kanya? Okay, so ito kasing mga clownfish na ito, bukod sa sila ay sobrang maliliit, lubhang matingkad ang kanilang mga kulay. So dahil matingkad ang kulay ng clownfish, which is bright orange and black, nakaka-attract ito or nakakahalina ito na lumapit ang ibang isda sa kanya. Pero sa halip na makain nila ang mga clownfish, sa paglapit nila sa mga sea anemone, sila naman ang nalalason sa mga tentacles nito. Kaya in return, sila ang nagsisilbing pagkain ng mga sea anemone. Kaya maaari nating sabihin na ang relasyon or interaction sa pagitan ng clownfish at sea anemone ay mutualism. Sa kadahilan ng kapwa sila nakikinabang sa isa't isa. Ang clownfish ay nakikinabang sa paraang nagkakaroon siya ng proteksyon at tirahan. Samantalang naman ang sea anemone ay nakikinabang sa pamamaraang nakakapag-provide ng pagkain ang clownfish para sa kanya. Do you have any question? Well, if you don't have, let's proceed to our next example. So the next example is the relationship between a flower and a butterfly. The interaction between butterflies and flowers is also identified as mutualism. Butterflies generally like to eat sweet juice or nectar on flowers, while flowers as reproductive organ in plants are helped because these beautiful insects help spread pollen. The same relationship example goes with the bees and flowers. Next is we have commensalism. Okay kids, let's read it all together. Commensalism is a type of symbiotic relationship between two organisms in which one benefits without affecting the other in any way. In here, only one species benefits from the interaction and the other one is not getting any benefit nor harm. For example, is the cattle and cattle egret. So these two animals tend to graze on grass fields and every time na maglalakad ang cattle o yung baka sa damuhan, naglilipanan ng maliliit na insekto at kulisap providing the opportunity for the bird to catch its food. So for our next picture, can you tell me kung ano ang nakikita nyo? Very good! So it's a picture of a shark and a small fish na what we call as remora. Nakakita na ba kayong lahat ng shark or pating? Okay. So, sino sa inyo ang makakapag-describe sa akin ng katangian ng shark? Very good. So, ang shark o pating ay isang malakas, matapang, at makapangirihang sea creature. How about remora? Nakakita na ba kayo ng remora? So, ang iba sa atin marahil ay hindi pa nakakakita ng remora. So, base dito sa ating larawan, ang remora ay isang maliit na uri ng isda. So, paano nasabi na ang relationship between the shark and the remora is commensalism? So, the remora benefit from the shark without harming it. The remora attach itself on the side of the shark every time it swims. So, basically, the main reason for that is for the remora to acquire protection from the shark which is kagaya nga ng sabi ko kanina mga bata, considered as a powerful and strong creature of the deep sea. Aside from that, the remora also feed on the excess food thrown by shark every time it bites off other sea animals. Next, the symbiosis between orchids and the tree is also an example of commensalism. In this case, the tree provides shelter and protection for the orchids. 
So, ating tandaan mga bata that most examples of commensalism relationships are for feeding or protection. Next, we have predation or yung tinatawag natin na battle of the fittest. Ano ba yung battle of the fittest mga bata? Pag sinabing battle, ano ang naiisip ninyo? Very good. So, sa battle of the fittest, mas malakas ka, mas matapang ka, buhay ka. Bakit? Kasi, predation is a biological interaction where one organism, the predator, kills and eats another organism, its prey. So, this type of symbiosis is considered harmful for one species but beneficial for the other. Andito yung ilan sa mga halimbawa natin. We have the tiger and the deer. We also have snake and mouse, spider and beetle, and mantis and small insects. But did you know that animals are not the only predator existing in the environment? Opo, hindi lang po mga animals ang predator or carnivorous because some plants in the environment also acts as predator to smaller insects in particular. So may mga plants o halaman sa ating kapaligiran na kumakain ng mga maliliit na insekto. Alam nyo ba kung ano ang mga ito? Any guess from you guys? Ayan mga bata. The pitcher plant together with Venus flytrap fed on small insects. So ating pagmasa ng mga larawan. Ganyan ang itsura ng mga halaman na ito. They are predator or carnivorous plants. Did you understand the predation interaction? Alright, sige nga. If you really understand what is predation interaction, can you give me the names of the organisms under the predation interaction? Very good. So, we have the predator and the prey. Sino ang lubhang naaapektuhan sa predation interaction? Is it the predator or the prey? Good job! So, the prey. Ang prey ang higit na naaapektuhan. Kasi sila yung kinakain ng mga predator. And last but not the least, we have parasitism. Parasitism is the relationship between two organisms wherein one organism, the parasite, thrives at the cost of the other, the host. So kung kanina, sa predation, meron tayong predator and prey, Ngayon naman, dito sa parasitism, ano ang tawag natin sa mga organisms na involved? Yes, parasite and very good, host. Okay kids, analyze the statement. What do you think of this kind of interaction? Is it beneficial or harmful? Very good, thank you. It seems like you are really getting the gist of our lesson. As you can see, the organisms involved were labeled as the host or the one being harmed and the parasite or the one that causes harm. So for example, yung nasa larawan natin is a mosquito trying to bite off a human skin. Yung lamok is a parasite who can cause harm to us humans? Paano tayo nakaharm? Or paano na tayo naapektuhan ng mga lamok? Sige nga. Tama. Because of reason na once na makagat tayo ng lamok na carrier or tagapagdala ng dengue virus, maaari tayong magkasakit or at worst can even cause death to us. Ganun katindi ang epekto ng kagat ng lamok sa ating mga tao. Still about parasitism, we have two different kinds of parasites depending upon their place of existence 
or kung saan sila matatagpuan or kung saan sila naninirahan. First is we have ectoparasites. Say the word kids. Ectoparasites. Very good. Ectoparasites or outside parasites. Saan kaya sila naninirahan mga bata based on our definition? Excellent! From the word outside, ibig sabihin naninirahan sila sa labas ng katawan ng host. The host could either be an animals or humans. Examples of ectoparasites are tick or garapata, lice or kuto, and flea or pulgas. Yung garapata at pulgas, saan natin ito kalimitang mahikita? Tama! So, garapata and pulgas live on animals. While yung lies naman is sa buhok ng tao naninirahan at matatagpuan. Next type is the endoparasites naman or yung mga parasites na naninirahan, nagpaparami, at nakaka-apekto sa loob ng katawan ng tao at hayop. So, we have hookworm. Hookworms are found inside the stomach of humans, causing poor health and sickness to its host. If not given proper attention, it can even cause death. And also, we have what we call a tapeworm. So just the same with the hookworms, they live on the stomachs of the animals naman mga bata. So in your tatandaan, yung hookworm ay makikita sa loob ng stomach or tiyan ng mga tao. Samantalang, yun namang tapeworm, makikita naman sila sa tiyan ng mga hayop. Alright, what about this interaction? What can you say about it? Very good! It is also harmful. Wow, you were truly amazing! Thank you at nauunawaan nyo ang ating aralin. Alright, to further assess how much you really understand the lesson, I want you to get your notebook and pen. On the next slide, I will present different names of animals and I want you to group the animals under predation interaction. Timer starts now. <music> up. Now check your work. Under the predator column, we have lion, snake, octopus, frog, and shark. While under the prey column, we have zebra, mouse, shrimp, grasshopper, and fish. Well done kids! For further assessment, I want you to flip your modules on page 31 to 32 and answer learning tasks 2 and 3. That's all for today, kids. Until our next learning episode, and I hope you learned something today. Until next video, Teacher Mavel, now signing off.